Hello, hello. Welcome to Rise Above with Tammy Lynn. I am Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting the good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. I am here to tell someone that you are forgiven. The Lord forgives you. Over the past month, the Lord has given me two uh, particular dreams, and through those dreams, he has just given me the word liberty. And every time I turn around, I am either seeing a word liberty or I am seeing someone post uh, the Statue of Liberty. This morning, July 1st, I woke up and just this message um, that is full of just love and compassion towards God's people began to stir in my spirit. I have spent some time with the Lord and I'm here on assignment to again tell you that you are forgiven and the Lord wants you to forgive yourself. And he wants to remind you of how much he loves you. I am going to read a few scriptures that he has led me to for you. And the first one comes out of Luke 7 and I'm going to begin in verse 47. She has been forgiven all of her many sins. This is why she has shown me such extravagant love. I'm going to stop right there because this scripture is pertaining um, towards me. And I just feel compelled to let you know that obviously if you've been like following me, if you subscribed, you know, you're sensing like I have a genuine heart for the people of God and that I'm deeply in love with the Lord. Again, to whom much is forgiven, much loves. There has been so many things I have done throughout my life, choices that I have made. And I am telling you, I know what it's like to live in bondage to shame, even bondage to the opinions and the judgment of others because of sin that I have committed. I get it. I've been a prisoner. I've been a prisoner to the emotional and the mental captivity, the lies of the enemy. And I just share that because I'm not just quoting some scriptures to you today or just telling you to forgive yourself. And then, yeah, I don't know what the struggle is like. I get the struggle of trying to forgive yourself. I get the shame. I get the lies of the enemy. I get the unworthiness and just all of this, the regret, all of that, that sin can bring into our lives. But the Lord wants you to forgive yourself. So you are no longer a prisoner to your past. You don't have to be a prisoner to the, the choices that you've made, to the sin that you have committed. Amen. So I'm approaching you today, my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, to let you know I have been there and I understand the struggle. But I have also come to know his mercy and his grace. The first book that I co-authored, my portion of it, was called The Cliff of Relentless Grace. Because there was a moment that even after I had been forgiven for so much and was even strong in ministry, in a position of ministry, there came a point that I once again face a decision and that decision led me to make a choice that was sin sinful against God and I knew that it broke the heart of God and it crushed my spirit in my heart I really didn't want to have to face that decision and that's a whole nother story and I don't mind sharing it when the Holy Spirit tells me to share it and obviously I wrote about it and I didn't write about it for my glory or to call myself some author. I did it because I know. <laughs> I know of his grace. But after that situation that I was facing, um, I just spiritually and emotionally became devastated.
and it was even a place that I was in that I was pleading with the Lord to turn his face away from me. But I'm telling him he deserved better. Like I was pleading, I literally was pleading with him to don't look at me anymore. And I was just so ashamed. And I share that because it is one thing when you're living of the world and you're of the world and you sin and you just don't know. But when you come to that point of you know and you're a believer in God and you're going to church and all this other stuff that we can do, then sometimes sin that occurs during those times can be some of the most difficult because it's like we knew better. And how did I get myself in that position? You know, come on, I know I'm talking to somebody. But there I was, and I found myself up on this cliff, the Seven Falls in Colorado. And seven, to me, is a precious spiritual number. And the enemy used that number one day in October of 2019. And he told me if I would jump, that it would all be over. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. It was no laugh matter at that point. But that was probably like the first time that I actually thought the enemy is right. Because of my state of mind at that time. I was battling PTSD and um, just spiritually and emotionally depressed and devastated. And I did not see any way out at that point. And so my flesh, my emotions were in agreement that if I jumped, it would all be over. I wouldn't have to feel that pain that I was feeling anymore. But I'm here today, July 1st, 2022, and I feel myself even getting emotional on this. Because it was relentless grace that carried me down from that cliff. And a whole new journey began for me. And when I was driving back to Oklahoma after that moment, it was on a Sunday, the Lord had spoke to me. I'm not only going to use you to save them, but I'm going to use them to save you. And them who he was talking about are my now six and eight year old daughters. But at that time they were my great nieces and they were in foster care. And I was in contact with the foster worker and they were in a home with a mother and a father that were said to be Christians. And that if it ended in um, parental termination, then they were willing to adopt. And I thought that was the best thing for them. And everyone around me was telling me, Tammy, you don't want to do that. And I had been a single mom and raising my oldest, you know, as I did for the longest time on my own. Like everybody's like, you don't want to do that. And I just kept saying, I don't understand. Like, I just feel like their destinies are calling out to me. I feel like my heart won't let me turn from them. And I had never met them at this point. But on that Sunday, on the drive back to Oklahoma, where relentless grace carried me off that cliff, walked me down off that cliff and then he spoke that to me about those two little ones on monday morning i received a phone call from the foster worker and he says tammy there's been a change of plans in the current foster home don't want them you said that you don't want them in and out of foster homes so what do you want to do and i said bring them so the story is i mean it's really just a beautiful story in itself but i will just say this for a year, the Lord had freed me from some severe PTSD that I was battling. From a decision that um, I was pushed towards, felt very forced to do, um, and didn't want to do, but I did it. So it, it became my choice. And so for a year, as I was able to focus on those babies, who was one and a half and three at that time, Like I had a year of freedom from that PTSD. 
from what I had experienced. And then after about a year, and it also began to take a turn and it was heading more into termination of the parents. Um, and the Lord had then spoken to me, okay, now let's, let's come and deal with it. And by that time, um, because of how I was seeing his love towards those babies and how they were loving me, God is good. He's a Romans 8.28 God. And he truly used those babies. And my eight-year-old, her middle name is Grace. And my youngest, my little caboose, um, her middle name is Faith. And Faith has pretty much what I've had my whole life. When I didn't have anything else, I have faith. And faith is one of my stronger uh, spiritual gifts that I have. Um, and it's also been one that the enemy has really attacked. But I thank God for those attacks now because that's why I joke around. I'm going to lighten it up for y'all because this might be getting a little emotional. I'm feeling emotional. Um, that's why I sometimes say if you need to borrow something, I got, I got something that you can borrow. But anyway, so after a year, um, yeah, I, I went into healing and um, I was so thankful that um, God didn't stop loving me. And I just share that because for whoever this is for, there is nothing that you can do that is going to cause God to love you any less. I'm a living testimony of that. Like the love of God does not fail. The love of man can fail. And I know for me, it has failed many times. And I don't mean like man, like a man, like just people in general, humanity. So there's nothing that you've done that is causing God to look at you any less. And I have good news because that which you've done and that you have struggled forgiving yourself, that is part of your testimony now. The Lord wants you to forgive yourself so you no longer have to be a prisoner to it. And he also wants you to forgive yourself so you can be set free from the past and you can go towards your higher calling, which is to bring hope to others and to love them out of their shame and love them through their pain and be a reflection of the love of God in their life. The world and even those of the church have stood for so long with stones in their hands and even labeling sin according to the sin that they hate the most, causing people who committed those sins that they hate the most to be the worst and the most unthinkable. And the Lord says, Hate the sin, not the sinner. And so if anybody who's ever called themselves a Christian or someone within the church has ever made you feel less than because of a sin that you've committed, I am sorry on their behalf. And I ask that you forgive the church because there's been times that we as the church have felled people. But God is doing a new thing and he's raising up a remnant. And I know that I'm part of that remnant to spread his love and to help draw others back to him, our first love, our true love. So come with me and let's take a look at some more scriptures as the Holy Spirit is wanting to minister to you. So Luke 7, uh, and that was 47. I want to share that because I've been forgiven for a lot and it's caused me to love him a lot and it has caused me to love you <laughs> to love the sinner <laughs> to love the one who feels unloved to come and bring hope and to let you know you are so dearly loved and the devil's just been lying to you so luke 7 48 then jesus said to the woman at his feet all your sins are forgiven all my brother in christ my sister in christ all not just that one over there or that one over there or that one over yonder all of them any 
anything. Anything you have done. Whatever it is, whatever it is. He's forgiven you. Forgive yourself. All the dinner guests said among themselves, who is the one who can even forgive sins? Then Jesus said to the woman, your faith in me has given you life. Now you may leave and walk in the ways of peace. Your faith in God has moved him. He's not even entertaining the conversations of those who ridicule you or throw stones at you. Like he is so tuned into you. <laughs> His heart is fixated on you. And he's saying it is all forgiven. That sin that you are struggling with to forgive yourself, you're forgiven. He says, you're forgiven, my beloved son. You're forgiven, my beloved daughter. Now rise and walk forward towards your higher calling and go in peace. The Lord wants you to be at peace. And some of you, you're just never at peace. You're just struggling to find peace. And you're masking the shame and you're masking the pain and you're masking the regret of that sin with drugs, with alcohol, with love in all the wrong places. So it's like one sin on top of the other and the enemy has just had you held captive all because of that sin that you are struggling to forgive yourself for. And the Lord wants you to know he has forgiven you. So it is time to forgive yourself and give yourself permission to be free from it. Amen. The next scripture we are going to look at is in Ephesians 1 verse 7. And I'm reading all of these scriptures out of the Passion Translation. Since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins all because of the cascading riches of his grace. Grace covers you, my brother in Christ. Grace covers you, my sister in Christ. And he says, you've been given the treasures of redemption by his blood. If you don't forgive yourself, then you are saying, that the love that was nailed to that cross for the sin of humanity has no power. That that blood that flowed from love has no power. What he did was not in vain and he did that for you. And if you were the only person on this entire planet. Love would have still carried that cross and got up there and allowed blood to flow from him just for you, just for that sin, just for those sin that you are struggling to forgive and break free from. All because of the cascading riches of his grace. I'm going to put these scriptures at the bottom in, in, in the uh, description. And I encourage you for the, this message, who this is for. And you hear the Holy Spirit and you know that it's your time. 
And the reason why it's time and why I feel this message is so significant, because today marks the seventh month of the year and seven means it is finished. And I have just been hearing liberty just resounding for the people of God. And you are entering into a new wine season. So my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, we can't take the past with us. I'm here to encourage you, don't do it. Don't let the past have power another day. Do not let that sin have power over you another day. You are worthy of this new wine season. You are worthy of this new beautiful thing that the Lord your God is getting ready to do. You are worthy of the table that he has prepared for you. You are worthy of his blessings. You are worthy of good things. You are so worthy. And this month of July, the seventh month, I prophetically decree liberty upon you, freedom upon you, and I decree you shall go forth, enjoying the land flowing with milk and honey, and free from being a prisoner to that sin and to that shame and to that regret. No more, not another day. This month, the Lord is finalizing some things. This is your month of liberty. And the next month is August, which also means eight, which means new beginnings. The Lord is bringing order to where there has been disorder. He has been finalizing some things with the enemy. Because there's a shockwave of his glory that is coming. And so he's getting you in position to ride the wave of his glory and to enjoy, enjoy better days. Your best days are ahead of you. But if the enemy can keep you chained to the past, you won't be able to enjoy the greater days that the Lord has for you. So let's keep going. The next one we're going to go to is um, Hebrews 8, verse 12. For I will demonstrate my mercy to them and will forgive their evil deeds and never remember again their sins. Hear me, my brother in Christ. Hear me, my sister in Christ. When you ask the Lord to forgive you, he forgave you. And the only one that ever brings it up again is you. And the only reason you keep bringing it up is because the enemy has been attacking your mind. He has been lying to you, telling you that sin cannot be forgiven. Telling you because of that sin, you are unworthy. Telling you because of that sin, you are unlovable. Telling you because of that sin, you will never have greater. You will never be more. He's been lying to you. And you have pondered that lie. And the more you ponder it, you begin to believe it. And then you begin to entertain it. And then you begin to talk to God about it again. Today is a day of liberty, and I bind up that lie of the enemy in Jesus' name, and I loose the truth of God upon your mind, the truth that will set you free in Jesus' name. No more, no more will the Lord be silent or allow you to live in that prison. He is setting you free. He is breaking you free from the lies of the enemy. He's breaking you free from that shame. He's breaking you free from that regret. He's breaking you free from that pain. Glory. Hallelujah. The next one we're going to look at is, I want to make sure I got these all. Okay, Psalms 
86, 5. Actually, I'm going to begin in verse 3. Lord God, hear my constant cry for your help. Show me your favor and bring me to your fountain of grace. Restore joy to your loving servant once again. For all I am is yours, O oh God. Lord, you are so good to me, so kind in every way and ready to forgive. For your grace fountain keeps overflowing, drenching all your devoted lovers who pray to you. This will be in the, in the description of this video. Let this be your prayer. If you don't know what else to pray, pray this prayer and just know he's ready to forgive. You have to forgive yourself first. There's a few scriptures that, um, and actually give me just a second because I think I may have missed one here. Let me see. Sorry, y'all stick with me here. I had one written down, but I actually didn't uh, go mark it. So I just want to make sure. And if this is something he's wanting you to have right now, then I'm going to make sure you get it. Amen. Nope, I'm not sure why I wrote that one down. Okay. But I am going to share two more because this talks about um, forgiving others. Um, Matthew 18, 22. Actually, I'm going to start at 21. Later, Peter approached Jesus and said, How many times do I have to forgive my fellow believer who keeps offending me? Seven times? And Jesus answered, Not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven times. And then let's go take a look at Matthew 6, verse 15. But if you withhold forgiveness from others, your father withholds forgiveness from you. This message is about telling you that you are forgiven and encouraging you to forgive yourself. We are needing to get all doors closed. So I'm going to encourage you as the Holy Spirit is ministering to you and will continue to minister to you once this video ends. That you examine all areas of unforgiveness. Because this is the seventh month. And God is preparing to do a new thing in your life. And there is a glorious unfolding and beautiful new beginnings that he has prepared for you. And this is your set time. So you're not here by coincidence. He's closing doors and he's positioning you so you can enjoy the new wine season. So you can enjoy the new beginnings. So you can enjoy the good things that he has for you. So you're no longer pushing them away because you're feeling unworthy. So you're no longer isolating yourself because of that shame and that guilt and that pain. So that you can be fully prepared for what he has. For this near future he has for you. So he is being very intentional of getting you free from the past. So you can walk in the fullness of his love and his grace and his mercy. And enjoy these glorious things he has in store for you. That are just in front of you. And some of you, you are going to embrace this and go through this total forgiveness and healing process. And you're going to begin to see instant instant things manifest in your life because some of you have been praying for some things and been believing God to do some things and you've been feeling you've been waiting on those things but some of you the Lord has actually been waiting for you to come to this moment 
So when he does those things, you don't pollute the promise. You don't abort the promise. You don't push the promise away. You don't push the good thing away. You don't push the good relationships away. You go for the things that are in your heart because now you feel worthy and you know who you are. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to forgive anyone that has said anything to you, said anything about you, done anything to you. Forgive them. Do not allow yourself to be a prisoner to that because the Lord is saying, in order for you to receive the fullness of his forgiveness, you have to forgive them. Okay, so let, let's forgive them. But I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this message about you forgiving yourself. Because I know I'm here specifically for someone who this has been a major struggle for you. This is your time of liberty. The liberty bells are just going off. So surrender it. Forgive yourself. His grace has covered you. His grace has covered that sin. You are worthy, my brother in Christ. You are worthy, my sister in Christ. And again, there's nothing, nothing that you could have ever done that has caused God to love you any less. For many of you, you struggle to understand the depths of his love because that unforgiveness that you are holding towards yourself but if you would just allow his relentless grace to have his way with you and give yourself permission to let go, go look in the mirror today and tell yourself, say, you are loved and you are forgiven from that. And you are no longer a prisoner to that. Now go in peace. You know better, do better. And now help others overcome. Because there's people waiting on the other side of this prison that you've been living in to be set free because of your testimony. Because others are going to overcome through the power of your testimony. And that is why the enemy has been fighting you so hard. Because he does not want you to know the fullness of who you are and certainly who he is. And he is Christ, your savior. And he is that one upon that cross in which love remained on that cross and remained on that cross for you. And when he was on that cross, he looked out in eternity and he already saw everything that you was going to go through, everything others was going to do to you and things you were going to do to your own self that was going to bring hurt to you and hurt to others. Forgive yourself. July 2022. You will never forget this month of liberty. And you will be fully prepared to go into these glorious, <laughs> beautiful, new things that the Lord has prepared for you. And if you are listening to this message in 2023, or you come across it even in November, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Don't look at it like, well, she spoke that in, in, in July. So my time has passed now. The prophetic word of God, it never ends. I'm just bringing a now word. But for those who hear it later, it is your now word. And whether it is the seventh month or even the 11th month, seven means it is finished. Your time of being a prisoner to that sin, that pain, that shame, and that regret, it is finished. In Jesus name, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, continue to stand firm and stand firm on the word of God 
and stand knowing that he loves you and his grace never runs out for you and his mercy covers you. Glory. Hallelujah. Until next time, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Shalom.